how can one know that through which everything is known? How can one know the knower? Namaste. So last time we talked about how, even though all sentient beings can intuitively realize sat and chit, that is, existence and consciousness, they cannot intuitively realize unlimited ananda, or bliss, due to something blocking it. What is that? Avidya. Avidya, or ignorance, is also called maya. There are subtle distinctions between these two states. So now the author, Vidyaranya, is going to discuss the relationship of Brahman and Maya, Avidya. Chidananda Maya Brahma Pratibimba Samanvita Tamo Guna Prakritir Dvividha Chasa Prakriti that is, primordial substance, is that in which there is the reflection of Brahman, that is, pure consciousness and bliss, and is composed of sattva, rajas, and tamas in a state of homogeneity. It is of two kinds. To clarify the idea of avidya, the cause of obstruction, prakriti is being posited. Prakriti literally means the source of creation, or creatrix. It is neither a product of Brahman nor a real entity apart from Brahman, but Brahman itself, filled with the desire to create, etc. Bahu syam prajayaya, let me become many. Hence, it is not only not unreal, but is the bliss aspect of Brahman which apparently becomes the world. It is being, becoming, or being becoming, apparently differentiating itself into the gunas, which are not qualities, but the constituents in the apparent process of materialization. Sattva suddha vishuddhi bhyang maya vidye chate mate Maya bimbo vashikritya tang syat sarvagnyayishwaraha. When the element of sattva is pure, prakriti is known as maya. When impure, being mixed up with rajas and tamas, it is called avidya. Brahman, reflected in maya, is known as the omniscient Ishwara, who controls maya. The relation of Maya to Ishwara is like this. Being, Sat, is consciousness, Chit. This wills to create, to become, apparently. It controls creation, becoming Maya. Therefore, Ishwara is that consciousness which is in the process of creation, becoming, and naturally owning and controlling Maya. It is not something other than maya. It is the involved controller consciousness and the power and process of becoming. That is, the becoming itself is maya. In maya or Ishwara, there is really no obstruction in the sense we use the word. For Ishwara is, as it is said, omniscient. And maya, the process of becoming or becoming itself, is a conscious process running unobstructed. Even the consciousness of its being pure chit is not really obstructed. Brahmano hi pratishtaham, says the Gita. That which is pratishta of something cannot be ignorant of it, especially when the pratishta is itself consciousness. When we translate guna, as quality or constituent, we must explain what is meant by the two words. 
It is not quality in the sense of something inhering in another that is substance, nor constituent in the sense of factors, separable or separating. It is a characteristic manifestation of reality. Sattva is intelligence. Rajas is motion. Tamas is matter. Whatever appears to us does so as one or another of the three or a combination of them, in which one or another predominates. Being characteristic, it can as well be called quality, but not as something different from substance, and being of the nature of substance and yet having distinguishable characteristics, it is constituent as well, but can be cut out or separated not realistically, but only ideally. Avidya vashagastvanyas tadvaichitya dene kadha sakaranasharirangsyat pragyastatrabhimanavan. But the other, that is, the jiva, which is Brahman reflected in avidya, is subjected to avidya impure sattva. The jiva is of different grades due to degrees of admixture of rajas and tamas with sattva. The avidya, nescience, is the causal body. When the jiva identifies himself with this causal body, he is called pragya. Avidya is called sharira, or perishable, because it is negated by knowledge, or in the process the prior is negated every moment by the latter. It is causal because out of it come the subtle and the gross. The translation of sharira as body is a bit confusing. It does not mean something with hands, feet, etc., or branches as of trees, but the perishable and perishing outer coating of the inner consciousness building and guiding it. Ishwara whose sharira is maya, and who has it under perfect control, is the creator, omniscient and omnipotent. The entire creation is a conscious evolution, if that be the word, of his will, which is maya sharira. Pragna's sharira is avidya, and he is under its control. Avidya being non-knowledge, Identification with it means the experience that I do not know anything. And this, rather than prior experience, is the cause of all other experiences, subtle or gross. Hence, it is called this causal body. This is the forgetting stage of our knowledge of ultimate truth that is our own nature. But being free from all vikshapas, projections, or limited ideas, it is nearest the absolute truth. So this knowledge may be called supreme knowledge within avidya. Pragya is pragna. This is also sharira, because this too will have to, and actually does, go. This pragna becomes taijasa, shining, when it is identified with linga or sukshma sharira, due to the influence of vikshepa. It is shining, taijasa, because it is more ideal than material, comprising as it does the sattva, intelligence, and rajas, motion, portions of the subtle elements. Well, that's quite a mouthful. <laughs> Here, in just three verses, is compressed all the knowledge of the relationship between the Supreme Brahman and Maya. And this explains why the jiva falls into illusion. Because even though Ishwara has Maya under complete control, the jiva is controlled by that Maya. You see, so avidya, which is Maya, when it comes into action and the gunas become unbalanced, striving for domination over each other in a constant competition, 
This is what causes the confusion of conditioned consciousness. If we have trouble understanding how Brahman manifests Maya, it is because avidya is blocking it. Normally, or I should say, in the self-realized state, one can perceive this directly because one identifies with Brahman and thus brings Maya under control. But in the jiva state, when one thinks, I don't know, who am I? What am I? What is this world? Why is all this happening? Uh, why is this happening to me <laughs> specifically? And so on. That knowledge is covered over by avidya. Remember, avidya is when the intelligence is distorted by the competition among the three gunas. Now, he brings up a very good point, that the gunas are not merely qualities, but they are inherent in the nature of the manifested reality. So you can't get away from them. They're always going to be there until and unless those qualities are brought into balance. Then avidya becomes maya. Maya is prakriti, and prakriti comes under the control of brahman. And since we are brahman, ahang brahmasmi, tattvamasi, we can easily control the maya and enjoy because, as he says, the material manifestation is a transformation of the enjoying potency of Brahman, ananda. So when this ananda is under the control of Ishwara, it's pleasant, it's wonderful, it's very nice. But when the jiva becomes controlled by avidya, there is suffering. Isn't it? Isn't it the most intense suffering when one feels trapped or controlled or that there's no way out? Huh? There's no possible way that we can get out of whatever it is that's happening and that we're trapped in it and we're forced to experience it against our will. So what we have to do, what we have to realize to bring this situation under control is that I am Brahman. I am the source. I am the cause of this manifestation, this maya, this prakriti, this material nature with its three modes. The mode of sattva, which is intelligence, rajas, which is motion, and tamas, which is inertia. All material things are composed of inertia, tamas. And in fact, the material elements are measured by their inertia or resistance to motion, with earth being the most dense and most resistant, all the way up to space and having no resistance at all. So this is the nature of maya, or actually avidya. It resists and obstructs and covers and blocks our real intelligence. That is why all the scriptures and all the spiritual teachings in the Vedic tradition tell us over and over again in so many ways that we have to overcome this maya by intelligence, by jnana, realized intelligence, or realization of the supreme absolute truth, Brahma. Aung Tat Sat, Aung Shakti Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya.